Good morning. This is Dr. John Bennett broadcasting from Miami for the first Super Sunday of Neurosurgical TV. Uh, we have a great lineup this morning, and we're starting off with uh, Ibcheri, an MD a neurosurgeon from Bharatnagar, Nepal, the Noble Medical Center, who hopefully will make this a regular feature on Sunday, picking a different theme. Today's the theme of, of uh, aneurysms. Before we turn it over to Ipe, let's introduce uh, the panel. Hello, Ramesh. Hi, hi, John, and hi, everyone. Uh, I, I, I am a new surgeon working in Charing Cross Hospital, part of the Imperial uh, Trust, um, and uh, I'm, 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 I'm very glad to see you all this morning. It's a fine Sunday here in London, but cloudy and grayish, as you can imagine. As usual. Okay, okay. very good. Welcome, uh, uh, Ramesh. Rakesh, how are you today? Hello everyone, I'm uh, Dr. Rakesh. Uh, I'm from uh, India. I'm an MCH uh, neurosurgery uh, resident, uh, second year now. Uh, I'm very glad to be a part of uh, this educational series from ACNS. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Rakesh. And Raphael, could you introduce yourself, please? Hello, I am Dr. Martinez Perez. I'm, I come from Spain. I'm currently working in, in Santiago de Chile. Uh, yeah, thank you to invite me to join us, you guys, to Very good. To, Welcome, Raphael. We hope thank you. This has hit a lot. And Hera, I'm sorry I didn't introduce you first. No problem. Hello. This is, uh, hello, I'm Hera from Karachi, Pakistan, and I'm a medical graduate and one of the founding members of the CNS Student Society. Uh, it's a great pleasure to always have with us some speakers every week to convey education lectures and let's start off with the okay. slide today. Well, welcome here. We just did a spine conference from Karachi. Okay, yes. we also have Simon on the, but he steps away. He's a co-creator of this channel. Okay, I welcome and it's all yours. Afternoon, everybody. Depends on what time, uh, what part of the globe you are in. So it's afternoon for us. So we're talking about aneurysms right now. So before we uh, talk about aneurysms, considering the varied kind of fields, uh, varied kind of uh, listeners that we have, I'm going to talk once about uh, the carotid. Then I'm going to talk about some skull-based principles. So how do we expose these aneurysms? And then we're going to show some videos of aneurysms. Uh, this is what we will be doing. The first thing first, understanding the carotid. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to share my screen right now. Can you see my shared screen? Uh, yes, yes, we can. Okay. So. The carotid, uh, as I always say, has seven segments. There are, there are many easy ways and there are many difficult ways to classify the carotid. But remember this, the carotid has seven segments. All the odd segments are vertical, which means C3, D5, C7. They're all vertical. So C3 is proximal. So, for example, if you are going from inside the head, C1, C2, C3, and up to the neck, C7. So, all the odd segments, that is C3, C5, C7, they're all vertical. Now, the carotid is related to all the cranial nerves from 2 to 12, directly or indirectly in some way. Well, it's a structure that keeps all the potential skull-based surgeons and aneurysm surgeons at bay. And many times when you do an aneurysm or a skull-based tumor, you have to drill over and very close to the carotid. It, uh, to become an es es established skull-based surgeon, you should be drilling right over the carotid. Or if you have to become an aneurysm surgeon, uh, if you have to do a, a ophthalmic or a uh, paraclinoid uh, aneurysm, you have to be drilling off, off the clinoid, which is very, very close to the carotid. So we're going to show you these things right now. Well, the rest is anatomy, anatomy practice and experience. So we have Yuha here who's got uh, as much experience as uh, I have been, I mean, as my age. So uh, nothing more. 
Now we have the carotid here, as I said, I have just put in a few segments of this carotid. So it will be difficult for you to understand as to what segments the carotid and what have I put. So I'm going to fill in the blanks right now. So that is the C7 carotid. This is where the carotid gets from the neck into the skull. This is the part where the carotid gets in. So its relations are lateral to that, lateral to that carotid, you will find the jugular foramen. Now, I'm going to show you an endoscopic dissection later on. This, remind me, I'm going to show you an endoscopic dissection where I will show you the carotid and medial to the carotid, I will show you the jugular foramen. So, uh, this is C7 carotid. It's vertical. I said all the odd segments are vertical. So, this is vertical. Now comes the Peter's carotid. So, this carotid, this C7 carotid, ascends in the petrous bone vertically and then turns within the petrous bone medially and horizontally so that this is the c6 carotid or the petrous carotid now it comes to the foramen lazarum where it's covered by the petrolingual ligament and then lateral to the clivus the carotid ascends again this part is within the cavernous sinus medial to the petrolingual ligament this is C5, again vertical. And this is the part which is inside the cavernous sinus. C4, many cranial nerves are related to it. And then comes C3, which is very close to the anterior clinoid process. And then the C2, as you're already seeing here, that is a C2. So now I'm going to let you know some other structures do you know which trunk is this this is inside the cavernous sinus anybody who knows what trunk is this, this is the meningo hypophyseal trunk which gives rise to the intentorial meningiomas what artery is uh, what artery uh, okay. is increased artery in of size artery of yeah, artery. And, uh, yes artery of bernasconi and cassinari arises from this trunk so if you can, in a tentorial meningioma, if you are going through the subtemporal route, it always makes sense to go intradural, interdural, not intradural, interdural, and then get this artery so that your tentorial meningioma is devascularized. Okay, so we are going to fill in the blanks furthermore. Now that is a cranial nerve, which is, which is very close to the clinoid. Anybody identify which that nerve is? Two nerves running there into the superior orbital fissure there. So that is a third node, that is a fourth node. And then you have V2 there, sorry, V1 there, and you have V2 there. So this part is the superior orbital fissure. So you have V1, V2, you have V3. So this is the gasoline ganglion. So this goes in the superior orbital fissure, and this space is actually not this much space. It's, uh, it's pretty close, actually. So, but if the point that I have to make is between the fourth nerve and the V1, if you dissect the cavernous sinus, take off the TCM, you'll be able to access the C4 carotid. And if you take off the anterior clinoid process in this region, you'll be able to access the C3 carotid. So you have C7, you have C6 petrous carotid, you have C5 paraclival carotid, you have C4, which is cavernous carotid, C3, which is paraclinoid carotid and intradural carotid which is c2 so you have second nerve third nerve v1 v2 v3 you have the petrolingual ligament that nerve anybody identify what that nerve is parallel just parallel to the carotid on top of the carotid in the petrous region anybody that is the gspn that is the greater superficial petrosal nerve and that is the eustachian tube running parallel to the carotid in the petrous region. That is the cochlea. So you must know that in the petrous, the carotid ascends anterior to the cochlea. That is the clivus. That is the posterior clinoid process. And that is the anterior clinoid process. So these are the relationships of the carotid to the skull base. And if you know these relationships, it's very easy to be a skull base or a vascular surgeon. And this is how, this is 
This is in 2D. Once you get your, your, your concept in 3D, then you have to start operating and then you find this concept and then you have your own concept. Right, so I'm going to show you some pictures. So this is a patient positioned in the way that you would usually position the head. So you, you have the frontal lobe there, you have the temporal lobe, temporal lobe will be here. So that's a cavernous temporal, that's a tentorium. And you can see the, the, the fourth nerve going there, that's a third nerve there, that's a, that's a carotid there. What's that structure? Anybody? That's a pituitary stalk and that's an optic nerve. These are dissections which we, we did in the master's dissection uh, in Paris. And this is the basilar artery. Oh, we have a we have an audience of uh, kids also. So should I cartoon says that? I'm sorry, Paul. I'll try to take care of that. Hold on. No, relax, 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 relax. Chill. That's a pleasant, uh, pleasant sound to hear. Okay. Now, yeah. okay. Now you have the carotid here. You have, you have the third nerve here. You have the basilar here, and you have the perforators there. You have the posterior clinoid process there. You have the fourth nerve here. So, this is a window that we generally use uh, to clip aneurysm. So now I'm going to show you operative videos of this. Okay, let me have a quiz here. Let me have a quick quiz. So which segment of the carotid is this? Anybody? Paraclinoid. Yes, which that will be? Well, it depends on how you, from top to bottom or... Uh, you are not allowed to answer, Ramesh. You are a man's master, man. You are not allowed to answer, Ramesh. Well, that's no fun. I, I was just I so, so eager to <laughs> join. C3. This is C3. And this is C2. That is the anterior clinoid. And that's the carotid cave. And uh, you have the third nerve going in there to the oculomotor trigon. You have the superior orbital fissure there. You have V2 going into the foramen rotundum there. You have V3 going into the foramen ovale there. <laughs> that is a C6 carotid. That is a C6 carotid, which is, which is horizontal. Horizontal. So that is the fifth nerve. That is a gazerian ganglion. And that you have the brainstem, you have the basilar, you have the P1, always over the third nerve. Again, this seems, looks like a bit messy, but look at the, look at the carotid. So you have C3 vertical, C5 para clival carotid, which is vertical, and you have C6 horizontal. That is, that is a petrous carotid. So again, let us look at the nerves. You have the second nerve and the ophthalmic artery there. You have the third nerve there. You have the fourth nerve there. You have fifth nerve there, and you, if you see. Medial to the fifth nerve, there is one nerve coming through the Dorolos canal, lateral, just lateral to the carotid, coming through the Dorolos canal, that is the sixth nerve, just medial to V1. And then you have V2 there, you have V3 there, sorry, and you have the petrous carotid and uh, just lateral to the petrous I mean, just on the petrous carotid, you have this nerve, which is coming in from the geniculate ganglion, that is the GSPN, GSPN nerve there. And then lateral to that carotid, you have the eustachian tube, as we showed you in the schematic diagram. So we have all the vessels and everything here. See, so you have C3, and that's the carotid cave. That is where you have removed the anterior clinoid process. Again, a close-up of the, the Dorolos canal and the sixth nerve moving medial to the V1. And you have third nerve, fourth nerve, V1, 6 now, V2. And this is para clival carotid, C5. And this is C3. And the anticlinal process is over here. So the anticlinal process, if you remove, you will see C3. Now, let's get out of this. Let's show you an operative video.
Now we are going to show you that is the frontal lobe, that is the left side. So I have, uh, I am drilling uh, the sphenoid, sphenoid bridge completely away, and then I have this orbital meningeal band there. This is a very big key for later, extra dural lateralization of the temporal lobe. So I'm going to cut this orbital meningeal band right now. I'll cut the orbital meningeal band. And after I cut the orbital meningeal band, uh, I'm going to dissect the temporal lobe laterally away from the cavernous sinus. This way, I will be able to extra durally lateralize the uh, extra durally lateralize the temporal lobe. So this way, my optical carotid triangle and my lateral carotid triangle can be made much bigger. So starting off. And now you are preserving the TCM. You can see how the temporal dura peels off nicely from the cavernous sinus. So that is a superior orbital fissure there. That is superior orbital fissure. You can see the bone margin of the superior orbital fissure there. The temporal loop dura is nicely peeling off. And this is the remainder of the orbital meningeal band which I am cutting there. Once I cut that, I will be able to completely expose the anterior that is a after taking out the anterior clinoid that's a c3 carotid and now we are going ahead and uh, opening the dura once we open the dura this is the anatomy so once we open the dura this is on the right side this is the this is the optic nerve that is another optic nerve that's a carotid there the third nerve will be lateral to this so we go ahead and open open this arachnoid and once we open the membrane of liquids between the optic and the carotid, you find the basilar there. That is the superior, cere superior cerebellar artery. And that is the P1. That's the P1. And okay, let's look at uh, uh, anterior clinoid, I mean, sorry, anterior choroid lateral aneurysm. So this is the anterior choroid lateral aneurysm. You can see the CT scan and the bleed. And you can see this uh, aneurysm looks very familiar to something we are familiar with. Uh, now, you see that's a carotid, that's a PCOM, that's a, uh, that's a optic nerve, and that's a MCA, that's a large ACA there. And I am uh, exposing the neck of this aneurysm. And you must understand that the anterior choroidal artery turns acutely and goes off like that. So you need to identify that curve and uh, put that clip according to that curve. So that we, we are putting that clip here. And slowly moving it laterally so that we don't catch the, uh, that, that, is, that is the clip, that is clip now. So now that is the anterior choroid lottery there. That is the anterior choroid lottery. Uh, not compromised there. You can see the anterior choroid. Sometimes the anterior choroid lottery duplicates. And uh, you have to be very careful. If you see one anterior choroid, that won't be enough. So this is the patient with permission. Uh, I'd like to show you another, uh, another case where uh, we this is a uh, this is a ruptured acom so this is how the angio looked that is how the angio looked so we are doing a small incision here 3 cm dural opening i I am now routinely seeing uh, you has a uh, very, very small bone opening also. It's a three or four centimeter opening. We generally make a frontotemporal opening, but I, make, I generally tend to make a very small dural opening. So uh, that is how we go into almost subfrontal, but I open a little bit of sylvian. Sometimes uh, I, depending on the aneurysm configuration, I open the sylvian before itself. Uh, but in this case, no, there is no need to do that. So I, I have opened the, uh, 
and I'm going here. I have identified the optic and the carotid so that I can put in a proximal clip if needed. So I am opening the proximal sylvian here. You can see the CSF and uh, you can see the brain getting progressively lax. Now that is the aneurysm. There is the aneurysm there. So I'm going to open the arachnoid over the aneurysm. That is uh, so we uh, we are not putting any proximal clips here. We we have the carotid uh, in in our control, and then now I'm going to open the. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to put a. I know the rupture point is somewhere here. Once I open the uh, arachnoid, I will see the rupture point. Usually aneurysms rupture from the fundus, not from the neck. So I am seeing that and uh, isolating all those uh, arachnoid. Yeah, so probably this is the rupture point. Huh? This probably is the rupture point and then maybe we will go ahead and uh, that is the neck, but that's not completely dissected. So we go ahead and uh, we will dissect the aneurysm all around and you will see what happened now. Now I'm trying to get some space for me for the between the between the optic nerve and the aneurysm, I'm trying to get some space for me so that I can put in a clip. I'm pushing the optic nerve, not the aneurysm. Pushing the optic nerve. It's not a great thing to do, but I have a, it's a very tight place. I don't want to put in a clip there and suddenly, and that is what happened. So it's not pleasant, of course, but uh, there is no need to. Uh, jump around the whole place. So 1438 was when the rupture happened. So by 1440 in two minutes, we had the, uh, we had a temporary clip sitting on the carotid and we are dissecting the aneurysm now. That place is still bleeding. My temporary clip has been used many times. So it's almost as good as uh, I wouldn't say not having the clip, but uh, it's almost as good as a very, very low pressure clip. So you can see the bleeding going on. So you can see the neck now almost clear. So I, I have to just look at where the tear is. The tear is very close to the neck. So I am slowly going around the aneurysm making some space. One of the good things about aneurysm rupture it is it becomes very lax and then you can go around it. So it is an opportunity also. Right. So now I, I know where the aneurysm is now. I know where the vessel is now. This is the enough information for me. I would have liked more information if the aneurysm was not ruptured and I was not rushed, but this is enough information now. So I am, I will go put the clip. So I'm going in. Well, as usual, the suction malfunctions and uh, then I have to stay there. Yeah, now I you can see the tear is here. This is the arrow where the tear is. So I'm going to incorporate that tear into my clip. Yes, that's done. So now after the aneurysm is split, so that is your A1, huh? that is, this is uh, the, this, this will be the contralateral A1 which is coming in, that is the A2 which is going in, that is the aneurysm there. So there is no vessel compromise here and uh, uh, this patient did exceedingly well. Again in aneurysm you have to know that Sometimes you do a good job and then you end up having a bad result. Sometimes you don't do a very good job, but you end up having a good result. So 
Um, at my stage, I would say I, ha I still have a, a lot of things which I really don't understand. That is uh, the ACOM. So the choroidal we saw. And uh, let us see a giant MCA aneurysm here. So that is uh, that is uh, we are dissecting, and then we see see the aneurysm right in the cilia and there. So that is how we start off this system systemal opening. We are slowly delineating the aneurysm there, delineating it further, delineating it. One second, you know. You can come and see that Mahindra Katila's uh, MRI here. It's it's here. It's on this. You can you can come and see. So we are we are we are delineating uh, the aneurysm well. I'm going to open the aneurysm. After opening it, we are going to we have decompressed it, and now we are finding fresh bleeding. Take out all the muck, and now we are. We are uh, uh, we are uh, constructing the uh, MCA bifurcation. So you can see the MCA bifurcation there. This is a white neck aneurysm, very white neck. So this is the other MCA. If this aneurysm was not there, this would be, this would have been the other MCA. So I want to make the other MCA just like how it was before. So that will be putting in a left-handed clip onto this side. So you can see, uh, we'll put in a left-handed clip there. There's no need to hurry. There is no tearing hurry in these cases. So you can take all your time in the world and gently do this. <coughs> right. So you have reconstructed the MCA. That is one part of the MCA. And this is this is the other part of the MCA. That's the MCA bifurcation completely reconstructed. And then for the completion sake, you can add another clip in between the two tips there. And that's it. That's it. Now, I wanted to show you, I, sh I told you the, the anatomy of the carotid. So I'm going to show you a small video where you are looking from the front. When you are looking from the front, you can see that is the basilla. Those are the two P1s. <coughs> that is a C3 carotid. That's a clinoid process which is taken out from an endoscopic way. And you have C C2 carotid there. And that's a cavernous sinus there. So you have C5 carotid there. And that is a Peter's carotid drilled out, drilled out Peter's carotid. We did sublazeral drilling. And you can see that is a C7 carotid, and that is a jugular foramen. That's a jugular foramen. You can see the lower cranial nerves going down there. So that is a jugular foramen. <laughs> so I told you about the C7, which is in direct relation to the jugular foramen. Well, uh, <coughs> we will show a few DACA aneurysms here now. Yeah. Yes, we can see it. Yeah, you can see the DACA aneurysm. So yeah, that is yes. one. That is one DACA aneurysm. <coughs> it's a small craniotomy, actually. A very small craniotomy. We're gonna go in the hemispheric, and then. After that, we're going you know, to dissect and then find the aneurysm there. So that is a vessel and this is the aneurysm. So uh, 
we are going to put a we always in this dakas uh, i always notice that there is a beautiful neck which is always nicely delineated so uh, we see the neck we put gel forms on both sides no retractors at all here so any chain so that is the neck put gel forms on both sides for the retraction <coughs> and once you have enough space you put in the clip and you know you have an idea obviously you know and then you put in the clip and gently close the clip after fashioning uh, the neck nicely you should know where exactly the vessel is going to be and then that's it okay so and then because there is no retraction the whole place closes off the single guard starts pulsating nicely and you can remove all the uh, patties and all that and that's it that's a clip sitting there beautifully uh, so another another daka again uh, oh this is a post up clip so yeah so this is again another daka so you see again no retractors just uh, patties there so you identify just the neck of the aneurysm that is a vessel and the neck of the aneurysm, the aneurysm is going to be going that side. There's no need to expose the entire aneurysm. You, so you expose the neck and you take a clip which is pointing away from the vessel and, and after that, gently close it. Take your time and gently close it off and occlude aneurysm that's it and you will see uh, once you take off the patties and all that no retraction again absolutely no retraction in dhaka it's uh, not good to retract if you put retractors so if you see that is 2.5 centimeters into 3 centimeter perhaps for a craniotomy this is a craniotomy and that's with the permission so let's stop sharing the screen um, I'm taking off the screen share can you see me John the hold on I I can okay. no you're still sharing the screen there you go there you go okay so uh, you guys have seen the uh, seen the presentation Yes, I, I let me quickly introduce some uh, new arrival of Seke uh, Sengobikov from uh, Kazakhstan. Hello, can you introduce yourself, uh, Seke, to uh, to Ip and Yuha? Hi. Hello, Seke, can I can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Well, continue on, Ip. I guess he might, might have stepped away. Okay, oh. Ramesh and uh, Rakesh, do you have and Raphael? Do you have any comments or questions for Ip? Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I uh, that was great actually. Always, um, I love to hear you talking about the pelvic anatomy. I think that was quite a, a nice way of explaining the uh, complex anatomy of the skull base. And always, you know, it is good to see the anatomy again and again, and you never get fed up of this anatomy. Uh, so that was great talk. Uh, and also the videos you showed, um, I thought um, the. The cases were quite complex. One comment I would like to make uh, is about the ACOM which clipping which you did. Um, as you know, people do tend to charge it on the aneurysm and try and clip the aneurysm, mostly in uh, elective uh, cases. But also in sometimes hot aneurysm, you can do that. I, I would, you know, you put a clip on the ICA. Um, I, I probably try and um, try and expose the A1 as possible. But I looking at the angiogram before, it seemed the a1 was quite um, going immediately, so I think it, it would have been quite difficult to expose it. But I, I, I see, I take, I take that sometimes can be difficult. But otherwise, I'll try and get the A1 uh, to put the complete on. But I think it was um, a good, good um, demonstration. 
Thank you. Uh, I would have liked to get the A1, but uh, I didn't think that aneurysm was going to rupture at, rupture on me from the neck. So I was uh, okay with the uh, if it is if it had ruptured from the fundus, I was okay by putting a not so perfect clip, but on the aneurysm, I had the exposed aneurysm. But uh, when it ruptured from the neck, I had no choice but to put a clip on the keratin, which is not uh, really what I wanted actually. But uh, aneurysm surgery is always like that. Um, obviously, you you have a plan, and then uh, the aneurysm makes you do something, which is not your plan. It's always it's okay. always like. That. Okay, Rakesh and uh, or Raphael, do you have any comments or questions for Ipe? Yeah, hello. Uh, uh, it was very nice to be be, be a part of uh, such complicated surgery videos and from great neurosurgeons. I'm very new to this, uh, so I j I'll probably just watch the videos and edit them. It was a very nice presentation. Nice to have you here, Rakesh. Raphael, okay. any questions or comments for Ipe? Sure. Uh, thank you so much for your presentation. Very nice videos. Um, I, I would like to. I'm. I'm very curious about some tips that you could give me. It's. Uh, you were talking about the the size of the craniotomy a couple of times. So I. I was first of all very interesting. How was the size of the craniotomy? With anti anterior circulation aneurysm, do you approach with them? And also, if you find any any troubles regarding the side of the of the of the craniotomy, uh, which are the possible the possible pitfalls for that craniotomy, also even in ruptured aneurysm? Yeah, did you ask me about the side of the craniotomy? Yeah, I mean, you were talking regarding that you use for anterior circulation aneurysm, a very small craniotomy. And I was thinking, I mean, my question is, what are the possible pitfalls when you are approaching a rupture, anterior circulation, aneurysm? And what are the advantages using that craniotomy? Hmm, okay. Um, well, I, I have always, in my uh, career, I have always used a single type of craniotomy. So I don't know what are the pitfalls. But uh, I have always used the small frontotemporal craniotomy. Earlier in my career, I used to use a very large frontotemporal craniotomy. But as as my experience uh, slowly increased uh, um, over the last ten years, I have started using a smaller craniotomy. But I have seen people like you are using much smaller craniotomy. I think when my experience reaches there, then I can maybe I'll be confident enough to do that. But uh, what I have uh, noticed is uh, even if I do a large craniotomy, I I use generally a very small durotomy, maybe uh, three centimeter durotomy. Now, uh, I can do most of my anterior circulation and even a basilar or a superior cerebellar uh, uh, aneurysm with the same craniotomy. If you would like to see, I can show you the basilar dissection. Uh, with the same craniotomy, I can show you the basilar dissection. One second. Mm -hmm. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> uh, this is not good. <laughs> yeah. Whoop. One second, John. I will just yeah, get okay. out. Of yeah. Whoop. They flipped off. These are some. Some of the I. I will jump back on though. He knows that. He knows that you just have to persist, in the spite of small difficulties. You know, Rakesh uh, and, and Ramesh, we we televised uh, a back conference from Pakistan yesterday. With oh, Salman, with Salman. Yeah. Ah. He, he, I, saw, I saw it, but I was I couldn't be a part of it. You, you were there for a while, right, Rakesh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was there for a while. Yeah, and here, yeah, here, here yeah. the show, there. I was, I'm surprised to see you here was, today. Yeah, we had good, uh, we had good lectures yesterday. Okay. I just, yeah, yeah. We're back okay. On. Yeah. I'm going to share the screen. <laughs> okay. So not you're not sharing the right screen. Are you? Sharing the screen? Yeah, you want you want, you sure you're picking the wrong screen. There, there you go. I think okay. You want to show a video, right? Okay. 
Yeah, that's right. So let us look at this. The same okay. thing to me. That's good. Yeah. So you can see the uh, optic there. You can see the carotid there. You can see the A1 there. I'm going to open the, uh, the membrane of Liliquest here. So under very high magnification, I'm opening the membrane of Liliquest. You can see the basal. So you can see the optic nerve there. You can see the carotid A1 there, and uh, you can see uh, you can start seeing the the basal there. P1, P1 there, and the basal very soon. P comb connecting to the P1. Still opening the. That is the third nerve. The large. The nerve is the third nerve there. Always whatever is above the third nerve is the P1 and below the third nerve is superior cerebellar artery. So this is a basilar and P1 dissection. See all the perforators going in from the P cone. So it is the same craniotomy and sometimes uh, I, I can show you what happens when there is a, a large uh, yeah I mean this is again the same thing to me that is a that is a posterior clinoid process and you can see you just saw the you just saw the PCAs and the basal are there that's a posterior clinoid process so Again, the same anatomy that uh, I use, I, I use it for cystinostomy. You can see the basilar there. That is a large PCP, posterior clinoid process. Again, the same craniotomy, no, dif no difference at all, same craniotomy I'm using. You see the basilar, I'm, I've taken the PCP off, and now that is, a, that is a basilar, that is P1, this is P1 again, that is a third nerve. Now, this is a posterior clinoid process resection. So, if I cannot see the basilar, then I can, uh, proximal basilar, I can only take off the proximal PCP. So, that is a optic nerve. The carotid is lateral here. And these are the perforators, uh, perforators to the optic nerve. So, I have a... Uh, expose the PCP between the carotid and the, I mean, between the optic nerve and the carotid and I'm going to drill this. Once I drill this, I get this much space. This is under very high magnification with a one millimeter diamond. So slowly drilling that off so that I get much more space. So uh, since Raphael, you asked me about the craniotomy, it is one simple craniotomy that I do. Uh, it is uh, maybe I I change the angle by uh, five or ten degree, but most of my anterior circulation aneurysms, A com, MCA, B com, anterior choroidal, uh, and basilar and superior cerebellar, I do it with this. Cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks a lot. I have great videos. I'm not a neurosurgeon, but the pictures look great. Um, so, okay. I, we hope to continue to do these on a regular basis to help educate the uh, neurosurgical community in, in the world. We're trying to use this technology to bring a lot of good, great things from Bharatnagar. <laughs>